Hello everybody, welcome to a new player guide for Arkham Horror the Card Game. Today we're going to be talking about Mandy Thompson from the Dream Eater Cycle. A super strong investigator that you will feel the power even with this limited deck that Travis built that includes just her cycle and two copies of the core set. If you only have one copy of the core set, we recommend picking up another one or proxy in the cards you don't have. It will make your deck more consistent and you will win more because of that. In addition, there might be a, uh, there's some cards you might have on this deck that are from the taboo list, something you might have heard of. Uh, we recommend for your first few playthroughs of the game, just ignore the taboo list, play the cards as printed. Uh, it'll just be better for when you're learning the game to feel the true power of Dr. Milan Christopher. Um, Travis, why don't you talk... Also, if, you're, oh. if you're wondering about two core sets, go check out our buying, buying guide. guide that we put up. About I guess I'll put it in the no, description. I'll make a, a note to put it yeah. in the description. We'll, Tra we'll, we'll try and win you over for that down there. Um, yeah, Manny Thompson, Yellow Investigator from Dream Eaters Expansion. Great stat line, like actually just incredible. Three brain, five book, one fist, three foot. Like, you got five in your good stat, you got one in your bad stat, you got three in the defensive stats. I don't think I could pick a better yeah, like, stat line for a yellow investigator with a zero and punch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, deck building is... <sighs> so you get to pick... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, you get to play yellow zero to five and neutral zero to five, as you'd expect. And then you get to play non-asset cards those zero to one that are either purple or red or green green yeah and then you also get to pick how many cards you play in your deck you can wow. play either 30 or 40 or 50. if you play 30 cards you get one copy of your signature as or signature card occult evidence if you play 40 you get two if you play 50 you get three copies of it and all deck sizes have one copy of shocking discovery mm -hmm. Um, your ability is reaction when an investigator at your location would search their deck or the encounter deck. They can either look at three additional cards or they can pick an additional card to take. Um, this is can, this depends on restrictions. So if someone plays prepared from the worst at your location, you can either have them look at the top 12 cards or you can have them look at the top nine and take two at weapons. Mm -hmm. And then her star effect is plus zero, I think. Yep. And you get to search the top three cards of your deck and draw a card, or four card, and draw it. Or commit it to the test, if able. Oh my god. But like, of that course one... she's got another upside. Uh, she's got good, she's got good heart and brain, six and eight. She could have easily been a five and nine best gear, but they were generous here like they were in pretty much every aspect. <laughs> they were generous pretty much <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> like they were they were like man what if you just got to pick not only what class you play but also how many how many cards are in your deck and yeah <laughs> uh occult evidence so this is a research which is like mandy's sort of little gimmick card type from the dream years which are when you're searching your deck if it's among the search cards you get to reveal it and then do something you get to play it basically Mm -hmm. from among the cards you look at even if it's not the card that you found um only if it's not the card that you found you can only do one research ability per search yeah uh cult evidence is just uh you get to draw it and discover clue your location yep this does mean that it sits in your hand but it does commit for a while so you, you basically get plus one to future tests and just get a clue for free which is great dude you draw it into your hand I think I played that wrong the entire time. <laughs> Same <laughs> here. I, I would just discover the clue and then discard yeah. a called evidence. You also get a hand size and a wild symbol out of it. Yeah, you, I can got... even, you can even pay zero to put it back into your deck if you really want to. This might be a good choice if your deck is like, getting real thin. What? Yeah, again, generous in every aspect. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then you can have, again, you have one to three of those depending on what deck size you chose. And then your weakness is shocking discovery. So when you reveal it, you I'm not sure this should be like a research, I, I feel. But yeah. uh, a forced research. Uh, yeah, when you draw it, you shuffle it back into your deck. And if you can't, you discard and draw the top card in the encounter deck instead, which I'm not sure why you wouldn't be able to. Mm -hmm. But if it's oh. the last card. I guess. Maybe, I don't know. 
And what it actually does is when you when you search your deck and this card is among the search cards, you discard Shock and Discovery and you cancel the search and all of its effects instead. Yeah. Which we'll get to once we talk about some other cards that the sooner you resolve this, the better. Like, this is the card yeah, you that you search for first. Deck, yeah. yeah. Um, of some notes, because Mandy is a triple color, Travis for this deck built a purple, which I think of this card pool is the best you can build with. We will, at the end of our discussion, talk about red and green as well. Unlike with Tony Morgan, where we talked about in the middle, we're going to wait to the end to talk about the other colors. Um, it's also a 30-card deck, which with a limited card pool is the correct choice. Because yeah, if you want, if you have twenty other cards to lay around that hanging around to stuff in here, like go for it. But yeah, but uh, let's talk about the cards individually. Um, starting with uh, Magnifying Glass, which just makes her book six when she's investigating, which is pretty sweet. Um, yeah. One thing that also this is where Old Book of Lore comes in. So one thing when you have a big carpool with Mandy, like she's very very good because like you have like mr rook and then other things that search old book of lore is a way for you to get consistent searches with this deck here yeah mm -hmm. yeah with just these cycles old book of lore is probably your best option yeah. uh this is like sort of a hybrid if i'm being honest if you just have a core set and this cycle mandy's a better it's a better daisy yeah in almost every aspect like, you use Old Book of War to support your teammates, and then, but also they get to draw two cards instead, or they get to look at six instead of three. Mm -hmm. So, just taking action, which kind of sucks. But yeah. Are. But I mean, basically, drawing two cards of your choice of the three is pretty juicy, and then you get your researches in there, you know, then it gets a bit nice. It's it's just one Bring of those things that. The allies? Oh. Sure. Uh... So, Dr. Milan Christopher, he costs four and all he does is give you a book? That can't be good, right? Magnifying well, Glass calls one damage. and gives us a book. Yeah, he, but he can take some damage for us if we need him to. And as a reaction effect, after we have successfully investigate, we get to gain a resource. So he pay, he basically costs zero. Mm -hmm. uh, he'll pay for himself and then, you know, anything else you ever need to pay for fairly quickly. Yeah. Uh, research librarian it says that when we play him we get to search through our deck for a book a tome to be precise and add it to our hand so it's worth noting that if you play this and you haven't solved your shocking rep dis our shocking discovery shocking the other one that's a different one mm -hmm. uh, yet he will find it Which... because it is among the cards searched because it's in your deck still yeah However, you can also use this to get it out of the way early on, and on a turn where no matter what you draw, you'll be able, somebody on your team will be able to solve it for you. Yeah. If you can't that's, solve that's it. That's a real function. Yeah, honestly, yeah. like that's, you want to turn one research librarian to resolve, find your shock and discovery, draw your bad card, have it be on the board, and then just start searching freely until you have to shuffle yeah. your deck again. Yeah, the other that's thing he does The card you draw just kills the research librarian. Like, yeah. yeah. He's also just basically extra copies of Book of Old Lore or yeah. Book of Lore whatever. and Dream Diary, yeah, which is also here. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. So like, that's like sort of what he does. That's the best advice that we can give you as a new player playing Mandy. Don't be afraid to actively seek out your shocking discovery. You want to draw it as soon as possible because then you can start searching freely, and like, there is no better feeling than searching your deck knowing your shocking discovery is like out of it especially when it's like the first turn it's like i'm ready because then your future research librarian grabs two books you get a resolve a uh, research of your choice in your deck like it's just heaven it's great yeah like it you're gonna see the shocking discovery eventually anyway it's better to just get it out of the way yeah especially on like a search like that like that's why research librarian's perfect here because like mm -hmm. It's just two resources, get rid of it. It's done. Uh, Travis, why don't you talk about these guys? Uh, Drawn to the Flame is just like a solid purple card from the core set. It just grabs you two clues for one action is the big thing. Um, hitting the high shroud locations isn't too tough for Mandy because of her five book, but like, hey, we need to put some cards in this deck anyway. What's my spot? Um Yeah, two Tesla's clues is pretty sweet. War protection is really, really good. 
It uh, basically makes Drawn to the Flame not have a drawback. It makes Shocking Discovery kind of not exist. Um, you can blank the games thing for a turn. Just a good card. I was just looking through my Mandy deck that for our Forgotten Age to see what my splash was, and my splash was purple. So Yeah. It's good it's a good splash. Purple cards are pretty good. Yeah. Uh, working a hunch is again, you don't really need to getting Tesla's clues isn't a huge priority in Mandy, but it's nice when it happens. Uh, this commits for two books, which is good. And again, it's just the cards in your deck that exist. It's pretty sweet. Um, something else to know about this is like normally working on hunch is a card that I'm not a huge fan of because two resources is actually a lot in yellow decks. But between Dr. Milan and uh, your three copies of Stein Relation, Revelation, you're actually going to have quite a few resources and that, that two cost is not going to be a, a big issue for you. Mm-hmm. And last for this page is Deduction, which is plus one book and when you get a clue, you get another clue as good as two actions and one. It's like you're playing Rex for one turn, baby. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll talk about Guts. I haven't talked about it in a while. Uh, Guts is good <laughs> because it's a, uh, it boosts your brain, and the Mythos deck is going to fight you most commonly through brain. So it's uh, your key defensive stat that will then also draw you a card. So not only will you laugh in the face of the Mythos deck after you purposely find your shocking discovery and make an easy brain three test because you committed a Guts, you get a draw a card and then search your deck freely. Just imagine that world. Uh, there's a one of manual dexterity because myriad cards do make it a little bit weird, uh, but this will help you boost up your defensive stat as well. Or if you ever need to get away from a monster before you have a very strong upgrade that we'll get to, this could also help you with that. And then Unexpected Courage just helps you for a test, but doesn't replace itself afterwards. It also can help your friends as well. You can commit to their their tests as well for those turns. The Mail Dexterity is particularly good with Mandy because of her three foot. We're bumping a scale up from, like, three is, like, baseline for it to be usable. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, and her stat line's crazy. We were saying, I was talking to crazy. Travis before. That five book is honestly Why, really ridiculous. But yeah, sorry. Uh, bumping a skill up from three to five is like five is good enough to pass most tests like being two up is where you want to be on standard difficulty most of the time you're still going to fail some tests but like generally that's where you want to be yeah and like manual dexterity because she has a three it's worth investing cards that allow you to bump that up to pass those tests whereas if it was two or one to bump you up to three or four it's just not worth yeah, like with this, you're never you never want to bump up your fist with that unexpected courage. Just take the beats if there's a fist test on a mythos card. They're rarely yeah, like unless but... it's rarely going to kill you. Yeah. Like... <clears throat> oh, there is uh, there is one other one other card that we'll get to that you might want to pump your fist with unexpected courage. But oh, outside yeah. of that, yeah. Um, who wants to take these ones, Travis? Why don't you take these ones? Okay. Uh, Dream Diary is good. It's another tome for your other hand. Your research library can find it. It's got sweet upgrades later. Which Brian and I uh, upgrade, er, argue about a lot, but that's okay. Uh, it's basically a Dream Diary. Two to play. It sits in play. As an action, you can get an essence the Dream add to your hand. Which I remembered to put in the slide. It's wow, right good there. job, Justin. Uh, essence uh, the Dream is just an unexpected courage. And after you succeed by... Is that three or more? Yep. During a skill test, which essence the dream is controlled, which should not be hard because you just just slam into a book test and you're like, oh, I have seven. Yeah, you investigate at seven to a shroud two location, get a clue, and translate your diary. Yeah. Oh baby. If you don't even have magnifying glass or Doctor Milan or whatever, like it shouldn't be hard. And yeah. then you get to translate the diary, which is or investigate the dreams or whatever. And that's that's good as you'll see later. Yeah, I'll talk about astounding revelation because I love shocked rabbi. Um, this is the research that Travis was talking about. So you get three in your deck and you can resolve one research action if uh, ability while you're searching and there's one in the search cards. This one gives you two resources or you place one secret on an asset you control. So if you do have something that wants secrets, you can load that up or you can just get some free money while searching and it feels good. Uh, read the signs <clears throat> allows you to investigate a location adding your brain to the skills so you get to do with just no other uh, 
abilities listed, you get to investigate at eight. You gain an additional clue, so it's like a deduction, but you also get to ignore any uh, abilities that would trigger uh, or any keywords on your location that would trigger while you're investigating as well. So this would include stuff like Haunted from the um, Circle Undone, Super. as well as any things that are like take one damage or like discard cards from your hand if you would gain a clue here. Yeah, that one's like pretty niche. At the end of the day, this is basically like a draw to the flame you don't draw any yeah. tarot card for. But yeah, the last part of that is flavor text. Yeah. Yeah. Also very good for translating diary. Yes, definitely. Yes. Brent, why don't you talk about this one? So Spectral Razor is the card that creates the scenario in which you might want to use an unexpected courage or a essence of the dream to pump up your fist. Uh, for two, we get to fight and add our brain to our punch score. <clears throat> and uh, if we succeed, we do a bonus damage. If the enemy is not elite, we deal another bonus damage. So three damage is kind of a lot. You also get to engage the enemy as well. Yeah, yeah. So there's no risk to the person who's holding it. Yeah. So you well, can where's the fun in that? As your seeker, you can flex <laughs> on your goon. <laughs> and get to fight at four or one yeah, time. Yeah, take their enemy and then just destroy that enemy. Yeah. That's one thing Mandy's very good at is making the other players feel like they don't matter. That's why you should watch. Okay, it's coming out this Friday. We rank every investigator in the game. So, guess where Mandy is? Uh, some upgrades on the core set. There's upgrade, upgraded magnifying glass. So now it's fast, and you can also put it back into your hand if you do care about hand size or want to play another asset that takes up your hand size. Uh, hand slot like Dream, Diary, or Old Book of Lore. Uh, there's also Disc of Idzamna, which uh, if an enemy, a non-elite enemy would spawn your location, it doesn't instead. And then uh, you discard... Uh, Disc of Examina. So if you're worried about that, she does have three foot and the manual dexterity, the Dream Diary and the Unexpected Courage makes it so she can run away from enemies pretty good. Not to mention the upgrade we are about to get to, but uh, this is an option as well if you do are worried about that kind of thing. Yeah, I think the Disc of Examina is actually a pretty solid upgrade as a one of because you have such an easy job of finding it. Mm -hmm. Easy yeah, time good finding point. it. And especially if you're like playing with like someone else on your team who's a monster fighter, you're not going to need to, like, have more than one emergency button, you know? Yeah, yeah. All right, Travis, why don't you talk it's, about segment of the a segment of Onyx, and then I will complain about segment of Onyx. I normally do the complain, but I will I will fulfill the other side of it this time. Sounds good. Segment of Onyx, one to play. Well, it costs you one experience. We'll start with that. And it's mirrored. So you get all three copies for a single experience. Wow. Uh, you can commit them for wild, but you don't want to do that. It costs you one money to play, and it's fast, so it does not cost you an action to play. So you can just sit with these in your hand and then play them all once you have them. If there's a lightning bolt, if you have three copies of Segment of Onyx in play, then you put them aside, and you get the Pen of the Queen. And then when the Pen of the Queen goes away, then you shuffle the Segment of Onyx back into your deck for some reason instead of discarding them. Uh, anyway, Pen of the Queen takes up your necklace slot, which is the competitor for the Disco of Zamna, I guess. Mm -hmm. But uh, comes to play with three charges and then as a lightning bolt you can exhaust it and spend one charge to either move to... No, you have to choose a reveal location. Yeah. For all of them. Okay. Anyway, you get to move to that location or discover a clue at that location or automatically ev uh, evade the enemy at that location. So... You just kind of do whatever you want. Yeah, whatever you freaking want. And the game just kind of like gets to bend over and take it. Yeah. And it's <laughs> so easy to fulfill. And then when it's out of With charges, you just, you just do it again. Yeah, because you shove them back in your deck. Your deck's already tiny because you you churned through it to dig out these the segment of Onyx. They just go back in instead of your discard for some reason. Yeah. And it's one of those things as well. It's like super... It might not be for a new player, but when you've had a few rounds with Mandy, you can time it so that you'll shuffle your deck, you'll get your things back into your newly, freshly shuffled deck, and all you got to do is find Shock and Discovery again, and you can play Pendant of the Queen again. Or like, yeah, like they seem they seem like relatively minor effects for the effort you have to go through, but it's so easy to find the pieces for Mandy. Yeah, that like you're only realistic after you get it the first time. You're realistically only going to miss like the odd turn without having it in play. And imagine just every turn you either get to move to any revealed location play or get a clue from a location for free 
or evade any enemy at a revealed location for free. Yeah. Like, and like it can get every really, turn. you can get really uh, freaking. I'm I'm trying to remember think of the word, but I can't. But just it's very ridiculous. Like in our the run where I'm Mandy, I had like one card left in my deck, so I used my pen of the queen, got th four three now four cards in my deck, but three of those were my segment of onyx, so I could replay it right away. Right, like. And it does anything. Like, I can, you can support your goon and evade an enemy for them if they're halfway across the map, right? Like, yeah, no, it deals with enemies, it gets you clues, and it provides, like, insane movement, elusive movement. Yes, like, an amount of free actions. Yeah. Uh, it's been taboo to be four experience, uh, which I think. Is it four? It's pretty three? fair, but like play with it for one. It's fine. Yeah, no, it's just cool. honestly, as if you're gonna, we still stay by the taboo list, but like this card is like bonkers broken. Yeah. Bonkers. Like actually, if you're only playing with this cycle, this card and the course as this card is like probably pretty fair. Yeah. At its experience cost, it's some of the cards in other cycles that really break it open. Yeah. But. Uh, Lucid dreaming can help you find your segment of onyxes or other things that you want to grab another copy of. And then there is the upgraded old book of lore, which allows you to pay, uh, reduce the cost of cards you find, which is pretty sweet as well. If you do have the experience you want to spend on that for, it does it also, also use only the cost two. It only costs two, yeah. Yeah, and use the secrets for your stang revelation. Yes, yeah. Okay, what is on the next page? Uh, Brian, why don't you talk about Otherworldly yeah. Codex? It's just Dream Diary. <laughs> So Otherworldly Codex lets you search through, I believe, the top nine cards of the encounter deck. And if you find a non-elite card in those searched cards that shares a name with a card in play, you get to discard that card. Dude, you can... Not the one you found, but the one that was in play. So, like, this I, kind I of... Love... It can remove monsters. It can remove all kinds of... Uh, Frozen in Fear, or even Dissonant Voices, if you really want to. Mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of stuff like that. And with uh, with Mandy, you can find an extra one if you're feeling real lucky. And or... like if you see two of them, you're just like, easy game, easy life. Or you can dig through an extra three cards to find a copy of something that's really bothering you. Which is probably the right call with Otherworld, Otherworld Codex. Yeah, but the other one would be fun. Yeah, it's more of a flex for <laughs> sure, but... Yeah, is, is it good? Probably not. <laughs> I uh, do love how you're yeah. like, yeah, Travis, you and me can uh, talk about pin hawks, and then we're like, other one of the codex. <laughs> Bryn, you can talk about this one as Bryn squints to read what it says. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's this one too. Well, I just know this is... A, I, I remember we had a conversation about this one when we were reviewing it, and I think... I don't remember who was very pro and who was negative it, but... I think Bryn was pro of it. He's usually pro of like the weird, more niche cards. That's because Bryn's a dreamer, and we're dead. <laughs> yeah, I look at the card. I'm like, this is to get me more clues per action. Yeah, no, yeah. No. <laughs> Bryn still has a heart and cares about things. Uh, so the upgraded Dream Diaries, they all now make it so that uh, you get the essence of the dream in your hand at the start of your turn, which is bonkers as well a free no, unexpected courage each turn is nuts um but then each of them have a little stipulation that if you have a this thing met it gains two additional wild symbols so, so it commits for four this is like while pen of the queen is broken it's like yeah you can do that yellow this is what you do you're stupid and broken but this is like this to me is like offensive i hate these cards um <laughs> but they're very they're strong. As as the, the, they're not as bad as the solutions from Dunwich, though. That is true. I just, I, it's <laughs> like Pen and the, oh. like Pen and the Queen is like so broken. But like these are more fair broken. But I just think they're such bad yellow design. Um, if they're not broken, they're just like really, really good. Yeah, exactly. And they're like it's yeah. But they uh, uh, choose the one that you feel like you can do the most. You probably don't want the engage with the enemy one if you have Pendant of the Queen. Eight cards in hand is probably super easy for Mandy to do, so that's, like, great for you to go with. It's a little tough if you're not playing the cards that support that, like, Dream Enhancing Serum mm -hmm. that is not in this yes. deck. Yeah. 
And then the four shroud is you're going to be on the high shroud locations, so this can help you uh, get through those. So yeah, yeah. We, this is what we, uh, say, but I'm actually going to support on this with this deck. You probably want the enemy one. Yeah. The, so like the engage with the enemy one is really strong when you find yourself backed into a corner that nobody else can help you out of. You just get to evade at seven. Mm -hmm. Like, that's good. Yeah. How how can you how can you lose? You can draw the red token. That's how. Uh, but like, I, I do think that one is quite strong. They're they're all they're all good. Yeah. Uh, the eight cards one does require a little bit of build around, but once you've done that, it's pretty much every time you commit it to something, it's going to be worth four. Mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, the last one, uh, the four shroud or higher. I like that one a lot because you don't actually have to make do anything to make that happen. It just does. Yeah. Yeah, that's your job right. anyway. Yeah, like high shroud, like high shroud locations are gonna they're gonna exist. You all you got to do is be there. Yeah. <laughs> the only downside of that is that you're already like so good that it probably isn't a problem. But yeah, yeah, it's... but you can throw it at any other test. Yeah. Like, like if your friends you're... there fighting a goon. Yeah. Or if you want yeah, them to be like, hey, do you want to be like me, investigate this four shroud location? But I only have two book. And then Manny says, don't worry, here you go. Yeah. Yeah, or even, uh, even you know, like, come the mythos phase, you still got the essence of the dream in your hand. Somebody faces a dangerous mythos test. Yeah. That's nah, not that scary. Yeah. Nope. It's a great support option. I'm going to be real. I... I didn't even realize it stayed in your hand. I thought you got rid of it at the end yeah. of your turn. No, it's like, it's, it's would... in your hand, yeah. It's kind of... <laughs> like, my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The other uh, thing you can do to abuse that is that you can sequence your turns so that if you didn't have to, if you saved one for the Mythos but didn't have to spend it, have somebody else go before you so then you can throw it at one of their tests, and then at the beginning of your turn, you'll get a new <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, that's good. no, no, I, you, you still, the, the shroud one's the one that you want. The, the enemy one like, also looks like really yeah. silly when you have a pendant to the queen. Yeah, yeah, the, the enemy one, like the enemy one's strong. I mean, if you have the pendant of the queen and the enemy one, you can evade the enemy normally and then warp anywhere else. So, like, yeah, yeah, that is a, still, like, a nice like, little one. Just like, I'll just you can also just like, I'll just evade him without the test and then walk away. Yeah, yeah. um, Abigail Foreman, she holds a book for you right yeah she holds books yeah. for you and you can as a reaction effect if you're using an action ability on the book that she's holding do it again so yeah in the description below there's the link to the travis's arkham db he talks a bit about the tome build you can also do with this instead of like you can kind of go in on that a little bit which is like as travis said like the better daisy you just don't get a free tome action a term but instead you just get amazing deck searching potential uh so she, abigail foreman would help you with that um, the surprise she's is even, fine. Oh, sorry. Sorry, she's even uh, so like the tone that's attached to her doesn't <laughs> cost your hand slot. Yeah. So even in this deck, like she can just hold your old book of lore or your dream diary for you, mm -hmm. and well, then you can have your magnet. Two dream lap, diaries, but, baby. Yeah. <laughs> You'll never lose. Um, Actually, though, how do you losing it plus four to two tests a turn? Yeah. Well, you only you only get one because there's only there's only one essence of the dream in the collection. Find two magnifying glasses and a dream diary. Oh. Yeah, so you can't uh, <laughs> you can't ever find your magnifying glass yeah. and you're like it's still too small, so you put your other magnifying glass in front of it. <laughs> Much better. Um surprising fine is another research one. Um it's also a myriad, so you do get three. I like this card, especially if you're looking to go through your deck really quick, because the more researches you can resolve while searching. Um, the thinner your deck will be and the more you can get back to doing the juicy good stuff and going through it again. I also um, like this card a lot, actually. You dislike it or like it? I like it. Okay, I thought I heard dislike. I haven't I seen like, you play with it. I like it. Yeah, it's just... It just it's anything, I mean, I, I hope they permit, print one more research, but I think one more... I mean, I, who, what am I going to say? One more research makes Mandy broken. She's already broken, but like... I bet we'll get, like, we'll get an upgraded Shocking Revelation with yeah. the return, too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's, or it actually, does a lot. We could get a higher, uh, XP surprising find too. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it commits for like three wild and it's like level four or whatever. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. That seems like a yellow card they print. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the eye of truth is, uh, it just, it's just so sick. 
<laughs> like, <laughs> like, it's just one of those cards that you're like, this cool. card's sick. I love it. <laughs> uh, commits for four wilds. This one doesn't make me angry, though, because you paid five experience for it. Um, it should be cool. And if it's on a, tetri a treachery and the test is successful, you add it to the victory display. And then uh, while anyone makes a test against that treachery card, they get the four wild on Eye of Truth, which is sick. Yeah, you just get to pick one thing that the game's trying to do and trivialize it. Yeah. It's juicy. It's like, not only is there one less of these in, your d in the deck, but also, oh, we're never failing it again. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, all right. card, the card's actually insane. Uh, Justin, the... I was sick with that being the circle undone where you get one of those like stack three. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, like, I'll, I'll make the brain it. test. I'll just throw this at it. It's not even in the deck anymore. Just... It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> there are like three of them. <laughs> That's also actually someone pointed out in the com uh, comment in our Tony Morgan video. If you watch that uh, at home, we made a, there's something to fool me once. It's a may when it triggers, so you actually could like just keep a card out of the Mythos deck. You don't need to trigger it again. Yeah, it's not it's not a forced ability. Yeah. Uh, stargazing. So this is the only like purple upgrade. There's not too many like exciting upgrades in the off color, but that's okay because yellow does everything in these off colors, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, I do appreciate that they like gave. I think they gave one of each color that Maddie can play. Yes. Yeah, they did. Um, but stargazing is a really fun card. I don't think it's necessarily good, but it allows you to basically put a good card in the mythos deck. When someone draws, they get a card, a resource, and get to take an action. Pretty sweet. I think it's pretty solid. I think it's okay in any. I think it's actually, like, quite good in Gloria. Oh, I can believe that. I'm very excited <laughs> to play Gloria. I just want to be your guys' encounter buddy. You guys do the work, and I just look at encounter cards. Yeah, that's who my mother's playing right now, and she's having a great time with stargazing. Well, that's because she's, like, like Gloria is, like, the mom for the team. If you're going to play games she with is. the mom, give them Gloria. <laughs> that's how I sold it to her. I let her read the novel. I'm like... She's like you, kind of. Yeah. Uh, so here are the red cards, if you wanted to do the red build. Uh, Travis, uh, I, in his write-up in the video, uh, the link below on the Arkham DB, he does have recommendations for what you should take out and add for this. Uh, we're not going to go over here over those here. We're just going to talk about the cards, because I do think the purple one is the recommended build. Um, but Lucky helps you not fail tests, which is good. Uh, and then if you would fail while investigating, you get to also then, you just get to get your clues with Look What I Found, which is... If the game tries to one-up you, you can one-up it back as Mandy. Yeah, I, I chose purple as, like, the actual list because I like playing with purple cards. And I think that if you're in a group and someone's not playing for protection, mm -hmm. then, like, you guys screwed up. I also think um, just generally with the core set and the the thing that comes from like and the cycle purple is just the best choice oh no i agree but like if someone if you're playing with one collection someone else is playing purple character you shouldn't feel in any way bad about yeah. playing a different color yeah yeah uh they're scrounge all, for supplies is a sweet card from the cycle uh the dream eaters it lets you add any level zero card in your discard pile and add the chosen card to your hand uh that is pretty baller um Fortuna's Discovery is a myriad. It allows you to investigate and get additional clues. Uh, this is actually pretty bad with the majority of red investigators, and I would say with Mandy, it's actually good. It because... is good. You you have very solid economy between Dr. Milan and his Standing Revelation. Yeah, and also, like, you actually have, like, a book stat worth a damn. So it's not like you have two in your discard and add two as Patrice and get four book, and you're like, okay, maybe I'll fail, right? Fortuna's Discovery is actually pretty nutty with, nutty with Wendy, though. Oh, I believe that. Uh, then the one upgrade is Sharp Vision, which allows you to investigate and gain more clues, which if you heard us talk about deduction, is a good thing. Bryn, there's something for everybody in this one. Why don't you talk about the green <laughs> cards, Bryn? All right, so we've got Elusive, which, uh, you know, the things that uh, Ender to the Queen can do? At level zero, this card does that, like, two of them, one time. Uh, we get to disengage from an enemy. It's like evading it assuming no one else is on the space. And then we just get to move somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, for the low, low cost of two resources. Yeah. Yeah, someone else on your team is playing Luke, yeah. and you're jealous of his ability to hop around wherever he wants. Yeah, and you're just like, you check too. it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, sneak Attack lets you help deal with monsters. Uh, 
they have to be exhausted, but for two money you get to deal two damage to them, and you do have three foot, so if you're the one who has to exhaust them, you can probably make that happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we've got emergency cash, because some of these green card, well, when I say some of them, I mean like all green cards in the game are expensive and slow. Yeah. It's kind of their thing. We're going to need money to pay for them. I can't actually tell you what Fallout does. I'm pretty sure it adds like your foot to your book or your book to some. No, so you, you choose an enemy or your location. You get plus yeah. one book for this investigation for each damage on the chosen enemy to a maximum of five. If you succeed, discover an additional clue. It does not provoke attacks uh, from the chosen enemy. So in Travis's guide, if you're like following your goon around, you can like have them when they start damaging them. Uh, no, no, the goon follows you around. The goon follows you around. Yes. You are the one to be protected. Um. And yeah, then, this, one, uh, this one's newer than me. Uh, three aces, I can tell you what that one does, because I want that one to work so badly, but it doesn't. <laughs> Have you tried playing Mandy? No. It, it, it works in Mandy. Yeah. Uh, so this one is Myriad. It, like, that's the good Mandy yeah. deck, is like this with the uh, the Ancient Stone that gives you Rex's ability. <laughs> and you're like, check it out, I got ten book. I'll succeed, draw three cards, gain three resources, shuffle these back in my deck or yeah. whatever, and just go find them again, do it next turn. Yeah. Yeah, so three aces is myriad. It commits for a wild, and if you control three committed copies of three aces against the test, then you just succeed that test. You draw three cards, you get three resources, everything's awesome, magical Christmas land. Yeah. For most investigators, this is really tough, but with Mandy, you can kind of find whatever's in your deck whenever you need it. Yeah. So. And we said it was easy to get three yeah. of the uh, Onyx, the segment of Onyx. Yeah. It's just as easy to get three pieces of the three aces, especially with that one Lucid Dreaming card as well. Yeah, yeah it's, Lucid like, it's like a little bit more difficult because these don't shuffle back into your deck after you do the broken thing. Yeah, that is fair. So like, yeah, it's like so funny so green, you can do something awesome once you get three cards of three resources, but then you got to work for it again, baby. Yeah, segment of Onyx, it's okay, Mandy. Just put it back in your deck. It's all good. We 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 worry about you. Yeah, five cards left in your deck, no problem. Here's three more. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't want you to take that one horror damage, Mandy. Don't worry about it. Or spend more than a turn without your pen to the queen. After all, you are the queen. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that's Mandy. She's very strong. Uh, she's very fun to play too, though. Um, it's kind of funny how a Mandy video or just a yellow seeker video in general like Harvey Walters they just take a bit more time because there's a lot of just kind of talking about just understanding just how strong certain cards in their card pool is and Mandy is yeah, fun I, I and she's did, powerful I, I I did make a joke in the video about like Mandy making your teammates not have fun or feel like they don't matter and to be honest unless you're like trying to break the game you're, that's probably not going to be an issue, and don't worry about it. Yeah, that's more just kind of like our bitter sarcasm about Mandy, right? Because if you're not trying to just... If you're not trying to, like, break it, you can play a good, like, a fair Mandy. In addition, yeah, you can also help your best, friends right? as well, which is great. Yeah. All right. Next week, who's yeah, next? Oh, no, it's Leo Anderson. How many do we have left? Uh, one, two, three. We're almost free. We're almost done. Yeah, it's gonna be weird not doing these anymore, but don't you guys worry, because I already got another series lined up. Yeah, we have another series coming up after this one. Uh, we will kind of tease it here, because we had a request for deck archetypes. We're gonna be doing a series specifically on dark deck archetypes after this one's done. Not just archetypes, but like packages as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think cards have a similar theme and work well together. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. Uh, so we'll see you guys next week or whenever our next Arkham video is. Or hey, even like in a few seconds when you're gonna if you're gonna watch another Arkham video, which you should, they're really good.